Yo! What up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Oh boy, has this been a very, very highly requested video. Now, I did one of these videos, oh, two to three years ago, somewhere around there. But in the last, I don't know, year, two years, especially uh, the end of summer here with the season coming on, a ton of you, and I mean a ton of you, and I understand why, have been asking for my tips, my suggestions on how to ask the farmer for permission. And not only how to ask him, but how to get a hold of him, how to find out who the landowner is, and basically how to just go about it so you can have, you know, the best outcome. So, first of all, if you guys like this video, smash the thumbs up. Um, I'm actually on the way to the farmer's house with 500 big ones, yeah. Not bragging, not saying that everybody should offer money, but with guiding, my job, uh, I do make money off guiding, I gotta be fair to them farmers, and paying them is the first thing that I offer as a guide service. But we will get into that. I'm gonna pull up here to the farmer's house. I'll tell you how it goes in about two seconds. Come on, please answer. Hello. Okay. Back home, it is, oh, come on, 8.33. I left the house at um, 6.30 uh, to go scout pigeons. I also left not only to go scout pigeons, dove, but to just put my brain to work and drive around and um, remember the flight line of, of the birds during waterfowl season. And um, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, People ask what I love doing or what I do during the off season, and this is just it right here. What you've seen today, obviously you didn't see much, but I'm gonna explain everything now. I love driving around, putting my head together uh, by myself. Uh, I work best by myself, I'm serious. I am I am a uh, rider on the storm out here. I work best by myself when I let my brain do its thinking, no interruptions, no music, no music, just my phone, my Onyx, my phone book, and me getting to work. What I'm getting at, the number one thing we as hunters overcomplicate, overthink, is that it's scary to ask for permission, okay? Those two things should never actually exist. Permission for hunting and being scared. Because believe it or not, farmers, landowners a farmer they are some of the best people on earth they're most of them are the most friendly until someone screws it up for everybody it only takes one guy not even a guide service um, just one guy one time to drive into a field when it's muddier than all get out and get buried what i'm saying is when that happens if that farmer just isn't you know above the nicest guy in the world and, and forgives you and understands that accidents happen, he's gonna be mad. He's gonna be really pissed off and you probably just ruined it for everybody else. All the hunting to come after that incident probably won't happen if he's a stern guy. And most landowners and farmers, they want you to first of all, number one rule is respect them and their ground. Going in and getting stuck in a truck is not how you respect a farmer. Sometimes it's really easy to get uh, permission on a field for the first time. What isn't easy and what should, what you should make easy, I guess what I'm trying to say is trying to do the right things every time you hunt it so you can keep hunting it and so other people can keep hunting it. Uh, number one rule, if it's wet, so these are my tips guys, uh, again, you, you, you got to come up with your own ways to get a hold of the farmer. Um, using Onyx, several different map systems, that's one thing. But being upfront, honest with the farmer, basically you have to, my job is to answer all of his questions before he actually has to ask me those questions. And this is what I mean is, 
Um, you know, first off, I always tell farmers, hey, I am a guide service. Um, I'm out of this town. Um, and first off, we use a side-by-side -side every time, especially if it's planted. Like if it's uh, planted winter wheat, we will use a side-by-side -side every single time. If it is wet, um, I will call you uh, like I always do. I always have to call the farmer prior to the hunt. Uh, the day before, actually, the evening before is usually when that happens. And I'm going to first off say, hey, it rained yesterday. It's a little soft. I just walked out there and tried it. It's a little soft. Do you mind us hugging the edge of the field with a side-by-side? -side? And that honesty gets you a long ways. Now, getting the field. Guys, first off, if you're buddy hunting, you shouldn't be paying for stuff. Um, so one of the main questions that I get is, Bobby, how much should I pay to lease a field? Guys, when you're buddy hunting, it really shouldn't work that way. And I know that a lot of you are gonna say, not a lot of you, some of you, of you right now are gonna go, well, people like you that guide have ruined it for all of us out here that are weekend warriors. I haven't ruined it. This is my job. You, the, the farmers, a lot of them, just because we come through and hunt doesn't mean that I have that whole field or all of his property to myself. It's probably a lot of, a lot of times and not is I come through and I hunt it one morning and I pay for that one morning and that's it. That is how a lot of my leasing that I do for, for guiding works. Um, very, very, very minimal uh, farmers and landowners do I actually lease all of their stuff and nobody can hunt it. One thing we do here at Sand Hill Flyway is help the locals here by far. We have a handful of farmers that say, hey Bob, um, I don't care if you're the only guide on the guide. Let me get my words straight. Hey, Bob, I don't care if you're the only guide service out here. I would prefer to only have one, but I do have this kid, this father, son, and a couple other locals that do like to hunt. And I always tell them that's fine. Absolutely. If they call and they want to hunt, um, they can either hunt with us or if it's a small feed and I don't need it or something like that, by all means, they can go out there and crush them. I don't know how many times we did that last year and the farmers, absolutely absolutely loved us and uh, and i bet you 50 percent of those times last year were leases that we actually leased all of the ground so we were giving up a hunt but that was okay we were making the farmer happy because at the end of the day that farmer that kid that we allowed to hunt for example was the farmer's best friend's son right so if i was like no uh he can't hunt it because we're going to be there tomorrow and then we don't show up tomorrow or the next day. So the farmer didn't make money that I promised, right? And then his best friend's son didn't get to hunt like he should, right? So before I get into some of my main tips here, I want to end this section by saying, <clears throat> if you promise the farmer something or a landowner something, follow through. When you don't follow through, they remember it, right? So if you said you're going to pay to hunt and then you didn't, um, if you, if he asks you, please, please, Bobby, don't, I don't want a truck or a trailer in there. I don't care if you have your side by side in your trailer, but please, uh, no trucks or please not, no more than one truck, right? If he pulls up and he sees you out there with five trucks and trailers, he's going to be pissed. That, that is, that is by far one of the ways to really piss off farmer. If he asks you, do not drive on it or don't have any trucks in there and then you go and do the opposite, he's going to be mad. So follow through, respect them. And what I mean respect them, you have to treat them as just what it is. Your only opportunity to get out there and hunt. If we ruin all these relationships as hunters with the farmers and landowners, guess what? They're the only reason we're allowed to hunt. They're the only reason we're allowed to hunt. The birds are going to keep coming down from Canada but they are the only reason the hunting exists here for us, right? Because we don't, we don't have the money to own all this land. They're just gracious enough to allow us on their property. Next point. All right, so, not, you know, finding the, the, the farmer's number, um, all that stuff. I'll tell you right now, going up and knocking on his door and talking to a landowner or farmer face to face is way better than calling them. Um, face to face interaction as a man shaking their hand, uh, being proper, 
uh, being confident, right? So going back to the don't be scared to ask for permission. It shouldn't be scary. At the same time, you need to display confidence in what you say. If you're not confident in what you're talking about, he's going to be a little weary, you know. He's going to be a little weary because not only does he not want his field messed up, but then he's going to think about, well, hell, he said he's going to have eight people out there. He looks 18 years old, so there's going to be eight 18-year-olds running around on my field with shotguns. So liability. You have to address him with confidence, with a hunting safety demeanor. Know what you're talking about. Be confident. So he will allow you to go out there and he trusts you that you're not, someone isn't going to die that day. Right? That's another big thing. I'm still building up to my biggest secret yet. Um, and it'll be at the end of this. But I do have some awesome tips for you guys moving forward. One of the biggest questions is, Bobby, uh, me and the boys, three of us hunt together, six of us hunt together. What should we be scrounging together to offer a farmer to hunt his field for one morning? So now we're in the situation of you scouted uh, that evening before the hunt, you found a field and you go ask for permission and the farmer says, well, do you, do you pay to hunt? Probably some guide services have hunted on him before. And it's necessarily not the fact that, let's sit you guys right there for a minute. Got the lodge in the back. Uh, it's not the fact that he wants your money. It's that he's probably just used to being paid a little something for his time, for the usage of his land. Now, two ways to go about this uh, for all of you buddy hunters and weekend warriors. Number one, you can just say, hey, sir, we're, we're just from um, here, hometown, and uh, you know we're high schoolers, or I'm, I'm really wanting to take my son out in the morning, or I'm wanting to, it's just, it's just us. We're not making any money off of you, sir. Um, you know, call him sir as much as you can until they don't like it. You know, if they're like, hey, call me Bill. Okay, I'll call you Bill. Um, being proper. Etiquette is everything. Um, these people don't mess around, so neither should you. Um, if he kind of demands some money, which they have the right to, offer him a hundred bucks. That means everybody, all the boys pitch in 20, 25 bucks a piece. I can't tell you how many times me and Wade did that back in the day. He gets on a feed, I get on a feed, and they're like, hey, farmer said 200 bucks, everybody bring 25 bucks. That works. 25 bucks uh, a piece for three hours, four hours of fun is very much worth it. Is my hair crazy right now? I feel like it's just going insane. I will video sometimes and I need a mirror to look in, man. I know that sounds crazy, but my hair will just be like this and Y'all going to let me know if I got some crazy stuff going. My hair is getting long. <laughs> uh, kind of annoying, but we ain't going to cut it. But rally. Rally together. Um, 25 bucks a person. Heck, that, that's a box of shells, right? Um, you have the money to go buy the shells. Do you have the same amount of money to hunt, right? It does. I'm not going to say it's fair to everybody to have to pay. I will tell you the amount of money that I spend to to pay for some of the fields is absolutely outrageous. It is outrageous. The, the, it has gotten drove up, drove up, drove up here in Kansas, and it is extremely expensive. I am not going to lie. One of our biggest bills in the three and a half months that we guide here at Sand Hill is in fact payroll, fuel, grocery, and land, hunting rights, hunting rights. So not even if we don't lease it all, one morning can cost a thousand dollars, right? Let's say we have 10 people, 12 people, and it's a hundred dollars a gun. You do the math. A thousand, twelve hundred bucks for three hours. Now, that is where those fields, <laughs> if you're not a guide service, you ain't gonna hunt them. Just because they know what it's worth, and it's their, that's their right to charge whatever they want, because they are the farmer and landowner that take care of that property. So, if they know that the value of their property to hunt is up here and that's what they demand, you can't be mad at them for that because they have to make money in the business that they're in, just like I do or you do or whatever. So, the number one comment that I really get sick of is, guide services are ruining it for people like me. Oh, are we? I'm pretty sure 
the guide service is helping most of these farmers during the winter uh, put gas, fuel, diesel in their tractors at $1,000 a morning, I'm helping that farmer. I'm helping that farmer cut his wheat next year. I'm helping that farmer get down the road right now. I'm helping that farmer feed his cattle right now. It is income for that farmer. So let's just think about that before we start pointing fingers. Oh, the old flower chair. Y'all have been missing it. Every time I do a flower chair video, you're all like, man, I miss some flower chair videos. I know, more to come. Uh, to wrap it up here, my biggest secret, man, and this secret helps me get fields a lot. And um, during the off season right now, like today, uh, so the outcome of this morning, I don't think we went over that. Um, so $500, y'all seen that. Uh, $500 got me first rights. So what that means is I have primary hunting rights to one of these farmers four fields. So four fields I have first rights for, for $500. And what that does is if somebody calls somebody else wanting to hunt, um, that farmer automatically says, hey, it's leased. Let me call the leasee um, or leaser uh, and let me ask him if he's going to be hunting it. So then the farmer landowner calls me. He asks me and I'm like, oh, thank you for calling. We're actually dry on fields. Let me go look at it. And so I'll usually go look at it. And then if it isn't big enough for us, we'll let the locals hunt or whatever. Uh, but at that point, if we do hunt it, um, whatever the agreed price is, whether it's 50 bucks, you know, a gun or $200 a day or $100 a gun, whatever it might be, $400 a day, uh, no matter how many people you have, there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to go about structuring um, the pay system uh, with the farmer. So in this case, it's going to be $500 for first rights on four different fields. Um, and then I don't want to say how much per gun, but um, a, a decent deal, a decent deal for him and me both. So uh, that $500 does not declare that I will even hunt one of those fields. There may not be a goose around those fields, a duck around those fields, on those fields. I might waste my $500, but that's the risk that I'm willing to take because this is ground that I've wanted to get on for a long time. And I know the opportunity with it. Every year that passes, I learn more and more and more and more. Um, my confidence goes up, my knowledge goes up, and the ability to have better hunts and more frequent hunts goes up, right? Because we hunt six days a week. Six days a week we run clients during, you know, from November 2nd, through February pretty much so uh, biggest secret man one thing that helps me so 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 much is make relationships with land landowners and farmers and what I'm getting at is make those relationships last uh, do your due diligence to make sure that you follow through with everything you promise or everything that you said originally because then what happens when you have a year two three year relationship and you find geese by that farmer's property or butts up to you know one of your buddy farmer's property or is in the general area of fields that you already hunt on or have permission on or lease the best thing to do is to know people okay you don't get anywhere in this world if you don't know people knowing people is better and i Dads that are watching this, I'm sorry, but I hope you agree with me. Knowing people, having connections, a lot of times is better than a, uh, don't take this the wrong way, it's better than a college education, okay? And I don't, that, that it's not saying you should not go to college. Everybody should go to college if that's your, if that's your journey, right? But having connections, growing relationships, uh, knowing people, knowing the right people will get you places. So if I find a, find a feed of geese or something and I'm like, hey, that's right next to Joe's place. I call Joe and say, hey, I don't know this landowner. This is the, this is a, the field name that I'm finding. This is the last name that I find. Do you know? Oh, yeah, that's my buddy Thomas. Here's his number. Actually, do you just want me to call him for you? 
Absolutely, Joe, that would be great, right? So what's better than having a farmer that's best buddies with this guy call him and say, Hey, Bobby, the uh, guy that leases from me, uh, he says you got geese on your winter wheat. We don't want them eating it up. Uh, would you allow him to go out there in the morning? And he'll probably say, yeah, give him my phone number. Tell him to call me right away. I call. There's a new relationship that I need to start building, right? So everything's a game. You never know um, if you're going to hunt something or if you're not. But I would say for all the weekend warriors out there, um, if it's a pond, yeah, try to lease that bad boy. Try to get the boys together, scrounge up some money together, and lease it. Um, if it's just a field where you find geese that you're wanting to hunt, I would say if everybody could churn up 20 bucks and you at, at least have 100 bucks to offer, if you think that, hey, this farmer, a lot of guide services have, have run on him before, and we're only, the only chance we got, boys, is to come up with a little bit of scratch, right? Do it. Do it. It's worth it's worth it to everybody that's going to be there to ha to pay 20 25 bucks fees. But confidence, confidence, confidence. Do not if you if you are scared to call or go and knock, maybe you shouldn't be trying to do this, right? The farmer again wants to see confidence and respect. Those two th those will get you everywhere everywhere farther than you ever imagined, right? Respect and confidence. If you're not confident, you don't know how to display respect correctly. That's, that's my two cents. And those are the most important ways to get permission and hunt. Um, I really, I hope this video encourages all of you weekend warriors, all of my, all of my nine to fivers out there. Um, you know that I left my job to do this. Um, I've been a blue collar worker my entire life job jump in every three four years trying to chase the dollar bill right and um I've, I've i've seen an opportunity for myself and that's what you guys have to understand hunting and getting permission is an opportunity that you have to take correctly you have to go about it correctly don't be some kid on there hey yeah you got some geese out on your field think me and the boys could hunt Come on, let's have a little bit of, of, of respect and, and structure here. Um, probably not going to get very far doing that if you've never talked to the man. But whew, I'm done. I hope I helped y'all. I really want you guys to get out there this season. I will be down in the comment section below. Um, be sure to drop a comment. Ask me questions. Um, I'll be down there answering them because I know that this video is going to generate a ton of questions and that's what I want. I want to help you guys get out there more. If you guys can't get out there and hunt, the industry, hunting in general, is going to go down. So I'm here to help you guys, I promise you. Look, yeah, the duck shack. I just got done insulating the ceiling, the entire ceiling. Me, Gerald, and my dad. We absolutely crushed it and I absolutely but way too much insulation. I gotta take all this stuff back. Uh, the duck shack, the lodge, it's filling up quick, guys. Uh, we don't have a lot of availability left, but it's decent, right? So if you're interested, any father, sons, um, any big groups, I have a few dates for big groups, but father, sons, two, three, four, there is no minimum uh, amount that you have to have, no maximum amount that you have to have. Get a hold of me. Fill out the inquire to book form at sandhillflyways.com. It's always linked down below. Uh, fill out that form and we'll be getting a hold of you, seeing if we can make something happen this coming season. I really hope that I answered a lot of the questions that you guys had. Um, I know that I probably didn't and I know I missed some things, but um, that's the gist of my story and I'm sticking to it. Subscribe if you haven't, but until next time. Got a girl that keeps it real And it's on a new